All right. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us virtually with the Brandywine Museum of Art for this new virtual program, Kerner Farm Artist Spotlight. My name is Bailey Gamberg, and I'm the Associate Educator for Adult and Community Programs at the Brandywine Museum. And I'm really lucky to be able to help lead and plan some of these programs that highlight our Kerner Farm historic property. Um, we're excited to have you all here with us. Out of consideration for our presenters, please keep yourself muted during the duration of the talk. We are going to be recording this program, and after editing the captions, we will share the YouTube link in a couple of weeks with everybody. Throughout the presentation, please feel free to enter questions into the Q&A chat function, and we will get to all of them at the end of the presentation. I'm excited to be bringing together today six different artists, sorry, seven different artists who have been spending a lot of time participating in our drawing and painting classes with Carl J. Kerner at the historic Kerner. Right. Well, he's going to go, he's going from California. Um, these classes encourage students to participate um, in their artistic practice on the, the property that was a painting inspiration for Andrew Wyeth for decades. We will get to see a variety of perspectives of this location from artists Stacey Bumgarner, Joe Chiron, Carol Carden, Bruce Poulterer, Joanne Seifert, Bill Sweeney, and Connie Wagner. This program was inspired by one of Brandywine's latest exhibitions, Carl J. Kerner, The Continuity of Creativity, which is open until May 19th. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Kerner Farm as part of the Brandywine Conservancy and Museum of Art. This early 19th century farmhouse and adjacent, an adjacent barn is revered as a site of inspiration for Andrew Wyeth for over 70 years. The first generation of Kerners on the farm, Carl and Anna, were the subjects of many masterful studies by Wyeth. The second generation of Kerners, led by the philanthropic spirit of Carl Kerner Jr., ensured the property's future by allowing Brandywine to acquire the farm in 1999. In the years following, the farm has remained a place of active artistic creativity and ongoing activity due in large part to the work of Carl J. Kerner, an artist and member of the third generation of the Kerner family. This exhibition highlights Kerner's work there over the decades as he continues to share the property's power of creative inspiration through his classes. We really encourage you to come on site um, to Brandywine and see this exhibit in our Strawbridge Gallery on the second floor. If you haven't been able to do so, it's a really cool collective of Carl's work of a variety of subjects. So now without further ado, I am pleased to introduce our first artist, Stacey Bumgarner, who will be sharing more about her work. Hey everyone, uh, thanks so much for being here today and for this opportunity to tell you a bit about the work I've been making out at Kerner Farm. I'm Stacey Bumgarner. I've been drawing and painting out at the farm since 2019 when I got lucky and saw an announcement from the Brandywine Museum about the upcoming session of drawing and painting with Carl J. Kerner that was happening at the farm. Uh, we had moved to Philly a few years before that, and I made a big career transition going from working primarily in laboratory research and science education to really focusing on my art. So I was actively looking for opportunities to interact with other artists and to find community. And I registered for the session and I've registered for everyone since then. Um, it's been a wonderful experience and it's really amazing to me that we can go out to the property and work anywhere outside or in the barn or inside the historic farmhouse. Uh, the work I'm going to share today is all work that I've made inside the farmhouse. So I thought I'd bring you into the farmhouse with me. This is a photograph um, that I'm using as my virtual background that I took in the attic while I was working on the piece that's the first one that appears on the slide. Um, this piece is called Valentine's Day and it's probably my favorite piece that I've made at the farm. Um, this, as well as all the other pieces I'll show you, are made by drawing with charcoal and soft pastel on a thick cotton paper. And this piece is about 18 inches by 27 inches. Um, the pieces I'm gonna show you today are all roughly that scale. Some are a little smaller, some a little larger, but roughly that size. Um, this piece started out being about the forms of the windows and um, capturing the rough texture of the walls, the cracks in the walls and the hooks in the ceiling. Um, uh, those were hooks that Carl's grandfather used for curing meat. Um, might be familiar. 
to some folks. Um, those very same hooks appear in Andrew Wyeth's painting of Carl's grandfather from 1948, and in some of the watercolors and sketches that he made of Helga in the 1970s. And I have to say, it's pretty cool to be able to work in the same room where Andrew Wyeth painted Helga. Um, the uh, very existence of this painting um, is a good example of what a wonderful mentor Carl Kerner um, is to the artists that come to the farm. Um, not every accomplished artist is also a great mentor, but Carl's really both. And um, there's a wide range of experience and goals among the artists that come to the farm. Some folks really are just starting the very beginning of their exploration of making art and others have been drawing and painting for years. Carl finds us where we are. and through very thoughtful advice and an amazing ability to communicate about technique and observation, um, and always with a great sense of humor, he really helps us to take our work to a new level. So when I said to Carl, I'm imagining red ribbons uh, strung through these hooks, he said, okay, let's do it. And we carefully strung the ribbon and I completed this piece. And he helped me to make a piece that was truly mine in a, a space that many, many artists come to, to make their own. Um, Next slide, please. Thanks, Bailey. Um, so the piece on the left here is called Threshold. Um, this was one of um, a series of pieces I did about the doors and windows at the farm. And I was struck by that little sliver of light that's sneaking around the lower corner of the door. And the way that the um, vestibule architecture and the light and shadow create uh, almost a monochromatic frame for that glorious uh, burst of color coming from outside. The other thing I've been trying to capture in my work are the marks that people have left behind. So the, the semicircular rub of the, of the paint away from the door where the latch swung for years from people hooking and unhooking and the latch um, knocking against the door as it opened and closed. The piece on the right is called Sunlight on Grandmother's Kitchen Chair. Um, the light in the farmhouse kitchen is glorious at all times of the year. And um, I was really struck by the light streaming through the window onto the chair in the floor below. Um, I started working on this piece in 2019, the initial sketches, and finished it in 2023. Um, so I started before the pandemic, ended after the pandemic. And by the time I was finishing this piece, the significance of that empty chair had really taken on a new meaning for me. And this piece um, really became a meditation uh, about the loss and the isolation during the pandemic, because the farm was one of the first places I started going back to after that long isolation um, during the pandemic. Next slide, please, Bailey. And then these two last pieces um, are the most recent works that I've done at the farm. The one on the left is called Trailing. Um, and I uh, these are sort of portraits of the furniture and the remnants of life that have been left behind in the rooms at the farm. Uh, it, with Trailing, I was really struck by that tangle of wire hangers hanging in this crooked, massive wooden armoire and sort of the moody heaviness of abandonment in that room. Um, and then on the right, uh, that is a piece um, featuring the things that have been left behind in one of the attic bedrooms. So you can see in this old foggy mirror on the bureau, the reflection of a framed picture of the Virgin Mary that's still hanging beside um, the bed frame and the torn and tattered wallpaper that's coming down from the cracked plaster on the wall. I really was trying to express um, sort of the how the passage of time leaves wear and tear and the marks that the people who've lived in the house have left behind. Um, I have to say that one of the really surprising things for me about being at the farm is that you can set up your easel anywhere and there is a wonderful painting there in front of you. It's like the stories are just there waiting to be painted and waiting to be told. And it's a remarkable place that's brought together a wonderful group of artists and Carl and I feel really fortunate to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacy, for sharing your work with us and for that detail. Next, we are going to look at some pieces by Joe Chiron. Oh, you're still on mute, Joe. Oh, better now? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, thanks. Um, yes. Uh, Really uh, appreciate this opportunity and I'm grateful to be able to say that I'm among this group of artists uh, who've enjoyed this experience with Carl. Uh, my background 
is in landscape architecture. I had a 44 year career that was very gratifying and satisfying in many ways, but like everything, things come to an end and I had to channel my creative energies in another field. And my wife uh, realized that and she uh, introduced me to the possibility of maybe taking this course with Carl out at the Kerner farm. And my first reaction was, oh boy, you know, I'm, I'm just not up to this. This is way over my head because my background mostly was in illustration and sketching. Uh, and that's pretty much how I went through the whole design process. But uh, I decided to uh, take a, uh, a chance and register for the course. And then my first time out to Ring Road and to the barn and to the farm was amazing. Uh, and, um, you know, you're just, you're just overwhelmed by different visuals and images. But of all things I settled on was Herbie the Goat, uh, who is now deceased. Uh, but I set up my studio easel at the time, which I didn't realize was not the right equipment for this kind of painting. And Carl said it in such a nice way uh, that I was able to purchase a, a, a plein air easel shortly thereafter and, and really get into it. But uh, I did take a crack at Herbie, and uh, my style at that time was in, was really influenced by the 44 years of drawing, which is my comfort zone, drawing, not painting. And Carl uh, watched me, and he said, you know, why are you using a pencil to sketch in Herbie? You're going to paint over those lines anyway. So when I come back in 20 minutes, I want to see that whole canvas painted. So I uh, I... I, I, that was my first introduction to Carl, and and that was his that gentle creative intelligence that we're also familiar with. So uh, I'd like to go to the next slide if I can, uh, Bailey. And uh, yeah, on the on the left is a painting of chicory, which everybody has a turning point when they're in this whole process, and I felt that that was a turning point for me where I finally started to really get a sense of what painting versus drawing versus illustrating was all about. This is done in acrylic. Chicory is a uh, introduced species of uh, perennial that really looks pretty in uh, spring through all through the summer. It's got like a nice violet color and it really caught my eye and I decided to paint it. And, um, and in it has we have a lot of different architectural elements like the the barn and the uh, and some of the wall and, and and this was a real learning experience for me. I, I felt like things were starting to finally come together for me. Uh, so I then went on to more more detailed architectural elements like the iconic barn and uh, this was painted in the fall. And again, a great experience with Carl, uh, always coming by and checking in on, on my work and telling me, I think we can all relate to this. He said, the, the, the better you get at painting, Joe, the more I'm going to pick on you because I'm going to be looking for you to improve even more. So I appreciated that. Uh, everything he said was so constructive and, and, and continues to be, uh, you know, to have him as a mentor, but more importantly, as a friend, as many to me. So, uh, we'll look at the final slide. Um, is that's more more ambitious kind of a composition for me? Uh, I started to realize, you know, just really what this whole process of painting was all about, and uh, I wanted to include the hillside, beautiful Chad's Ford hillside, and the Kerner farm itself, the farmhouse, and the spring house. And I painted this, it was a beautiful uh, early spring day. Uh, it was kind of cold as I remember, but uh, you know, I felt like I was painting with a lot more confidence and surety when, when uh, I approached this. And um, I wasn't drawing anymore, I was starting to paint. And, uh, and it just, the forms and the elements started to come a, lot of, a little bit more naturally to me. And, uh, and at this point in time, uh, I absolutely look forward to continuing with Carl. Uh, the, the whole experience is, is just uh, on a good path. And, um, and I'm hoping in the spring we'll resume. And there's so much more to paint. I look forward to every morning when we get there, 
to just be quiet and look around and, and see what could be the next subject. So again, I thank you all for allowing me to make this presentation. Thank you so much, Joe, and for sharing your lovely work with us. It's great seeing your, your growth as a, as a painter here. Um, so next we are going to hear from Carol Carden. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yep, you're all good. Okay. Um, this is a pastel. Um, I work in watercolor, oil, pastel, drawing, lots of different things. And I think this was one of the first things I probably did uh, with a red tractor that was in that shed. And I was fascinated, of course, by the red. And um, as far as the paper was on, probably the um, pastel matte paper. It's not a real sanded paper. <clears throat> and um, I love working with pastel, but I'm a little bit hesitant to do it at Kerner Farm because it requires a lot of space to set up your pastels. So I wasn't quite sure of that. Now, how do I get to the next one? Or do you go to the next one? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> these both are in um, a product called Walnut Ink, which I discovered a few years ago. I cannot tell you why and how, but I discovered it. And what's unique about it, it is uh, you can put it on a watercolor paper, preferably a rather heavy paper, and then use a brush perhaps a water brush and brush it out and get right back to the white of the paper. Uh, and it has a variety of dark and light. And I use it with a bamboo pen, a Japanese pen, as well as with a brush. And um, it's my current passion is using this ink. I just love it. Um, what is the next one? Um, this is, these are um, pastels. Um, just trying to think of what they, I'm not sure what paper they were done on. Um, and what I love is the one on the left is the distance, trying to get the distance. And in my case, trying to get a little bit more abstract because my drawing can be very specific. And I try when I use color to become, or I do become more abstract. Um, I think anybody who has known me knows that I dislike using the color green and I will do anything to be a landscape paper painter, but avoid using green all the time. So um, this is a little bit of a suggestion of to the values of green. And on the right, um, something that's always fascinated me uh, is the wire fencing there. It still intrigues me. Um, and I love being able to use something that's close up and then uh, be able to become quite abstract in the distance. Um, I can't say enough about Carl Kerner, who I just adore and I think is a wonderful teacher. I've had many teachers in my life and what I greatly respect with Carl is his ability to make everybody, regardless of their ability, to feel at home and to learn something in taking the class and the freedom of knowing that somebody is not going to criticize you, but be very supportive um, as somebody who has had many teachers, I am very grateful for that. I am grateful for the Kerner Farm and for Carl Kerner. And even for everybody, all the participants feel the same way, I think. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing, Carol, and your, your lovely work. Um, next, we are going to hear from Bruce Poulter. Oh, I'm going to ask you to unmute, Bruce. Sorry. You're okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, my mother was a painter, and after she died, I found her watercolor box and thought I'd like to try that. I'd always loved Andrew Wyeth and his paintings, and one of his paintings was a box of blueberries. So I took the watercolor box and tried to paint that, and I thought, well, this works, but I'm going to need lessons. My real job was calling on dairies and ice cream companies to help them improve their products, and I did this in the United States and all over the world. The nice part about that was it allowed me to take pictures and paint in different locations. And I have a number of uh, paintings I've done of dairies around the world. Painting outside, which is called plein air painting, piqued my interest in 2009. And then in 2014, when the Brandywine Museum and Carl Kerner and his dad opened the farm to paint there, I was really excited. That's where Andrew Wyeth had painted for 70 years. And when I walked on the farm for the first day, it was like, I can't believe I'm allowed to do this. It was such a, a special, unique activity for me. And I couldn't believe I might be painting in the same spot where Andrew Wyeth stood and painted. That was a real privilege that uh, Carl and his dad made that possible for us to do. Now, this painting is the back of the farmhouse with the doghouse. And I did most of the painting. And then I decided to try this technique where you put uh, globs of watercolor on the painting at the bottom and you spray a spritz bottle, which is just little drops of water on that paint and it would drip down. And when I did that, I was a little concerned when I first decided to try it, but it did work out. And it made the painting have some very different aspects. Uh, fortunately for me, it did. Um, the next painting. The painting on the left is um, the last painting I did, and I finished it in November of last year. When I usually go there, I decided I like to walk around and take different pictures. And a number of mine are up on the edge of the farm, looking back at the farmhouse and the barn from that perspective. Well, this one, this is one of the first days I was there last fall. I was up on the driveway and then I walked a little bit to the left and noticed this view of the farmhouse between the two posts. And that just caught my eye. So then for the next five weeks, sometimes it was Tuesday or sometimes Wednesday, for a couple hours each time, I sat there and worked on this painting. I thought this is really, I was concerned at first, is it going to turn out? And finally, after about the third week, it started to come together. I go back the last week to finish it. And lo and behold, the landscaper had come along and cut down a lot of the leaves and weeds on that fence. So I thought, oh my gosh, luckily I had a couple photos of the paints, the, of those posts with the weeds on it. So I was able to put them back and um, make it more uh, make make it more interesting um so that painting is is going to be in a in a show in a couple weeks uh the next one on the on the right is my setup that's typically how i do it other people have said that um i have a chair with my easel and i go all over just like others have done and i'll this one was the side hill of the house and uh, my paint box is there and water and so forth. And it's it's just so comfortable to be painting there um, where you see other artists also doing the same thing. Um, let's go to the next slide. So the one on the left is called Postcards of Kerner Farm. And here, I felt like I'd like to have some small paintings of the farm. And then I thought, well, this might be an idea where I took a big piece of watercolor paper and I painted the, the different scenes. The um, one is of the farm from up on the hill. 
The one on the right is the front porch. And there was a table there when I first came there. But eventually it disappeared. But I had some photographs of the table. So then I added that to the front porch. The next one in the bottom left is the back of the house where the woodshed door is. And then the spring house. And then the woodshed that's on the right side of the farmhouse. I like that idea and I made a poster of that and I just called it Kerner Farm Postcards. <coughs> uh, the one on the right is actually just like the one in the postcards, but it's a bigger version. I just like the way the roof and the um, the shed colors came out and the tree behind it with the posts and the clouds and the sky in the background. Um, there's so much to paint there that, um, as everybody has, you've seen different views, and it, it's just something that has a, attracted me there since I started in 2014. <coughs> One time I was there, and Carl was said, "Well, let's go in and look at the the woodshed. That's where Anna chopped wood to for use in a stove." And we went in there, and there was all wood in there, and there was a snakeskin hanging stuck on the wood one of the logs in the woodshed. And I thought, wow, if Anna went in here and saw that snake, I don't think she'd be coming in here again. Um, I have loved painting on the Kerner farm. Uh, Carl has been a real encouragement and given me insight into how to improve my work. He's always saying darks and lights. And he always has suggestions. And so when you're painting the house or um, and especially some of the windows, it's good to get him to give you some pointers. But I really appreciated um, Carl and his dad giving the farm to the museum and then museum opening it up for us to go and paint there. And, and it's been a real education for me and it certainly helped me improve my plein air painting. Thank you, Bruce, for sharing these with us. I love the the postcards poster is is lovely. Okay, so next we are going to hear from Joanne Seifert. Um, you're on mute still, Joanne. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Yes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Um, so I've been painting for about forty years, on and off, and unfortunately, more off than on. Uh, but I'm trying to fix that. In uh, 1987 was my first actual introduction to Kerner Farm because I went to the Andrew Wyeth, the Helga pictures, um, pardon me, my cracking, the Helga pictures up in Boston when I lived there. And uh, it was surprising to me that all these years later, I'm actually sitting in the same places as Stacy and Bruce and everyone else is saying uh, that Andrew painted. Um, when I first walked into Kerner Farm, walked in the back door, it was like someone uh, sprayed water in my face. I was that startled to look around and to see how stark and austere and really just plain it was compared to what Andrew painted. And I realized in that moment that that's your job as a true artist, right? You don't paint what you see, at first you do, but then after a while you paint your emotion, you paint how you feel. And what he gave us was his emotion of the place and his feeling about the people and his creativity, and he used it as a, a backdrop. And so when all of us are there, that's really what we're doing. And that's what we, we strive to do. Um, and meeting Carl, Carl is incredible, really. And everyone will say it. He's hilarious. He's humble, but he's brilliant. And what I like most about Carl is that he, you've heard of coaches or players coach, like Andy Reid, players coach. And what does that mean? Carl is a painter's instructor to me. And that mean to me means that he helps you be who you want to be as a painter. Um, he doesn't teach you the way he paints. He takes each one of us, and you can see it in everyone's different work, each one of us, and he finds helps us find in us what we're trying to say and what we want to make people feel. Um, and he's he's absolutely brilliant. I look forward to him every time I go there. Um, so the first painting is of the pond, and we've all painted the pond a million times. That particular day, I woke up. It was a beautiful fall day, that brilliant blue sky, very clear, and I couldn't wait to get to the farm. When I got there, um, everybody knows I fly in late and then you can see by my painting, I'm, I'm a very loose painter. I fly in last minute, I set my stuff up 
and I got to work. And the difficulty in painting and relaying your feeling about the fall colors, we all love them, but they can be very chaotic in a painting. So I had to find a way compositionally and color wise to kind of ease the eye more or less and not make this overwhelming. So on the top, I have a blue. I came around the corner and I have blue tops on the top of those grasses. And then the blue water gives that kind of circle composition. And I used, I balanced blue and orange as opposites to kind of calm the eye down. And you'll see to the left of the painting, um, it's not quite finished. That's it's kind of what I do. I solve a problem and I stop going. Um, but the left is not done as much because then it doesn't take your eye all over the painting. It kind of helps you settle on the pond. So that's that one. Um, you can go to the next one. So the painting on the left, when um, the weather is poor, I sit, I don't go inside to paint. I sit in a three-sided shed. And out of the three-sided shed, this is what I see. And I sat there trying to procrastinate one time painting something else. And I looked at that tree. And the story I wanted to tell about that tree was that tree at one point was a baby next to that house. And there was a time when that house took care of that little baby tree. And now that the tree is big, I saw it as in enveloping and reaching its arms out to protect that that house. And that's kind of a point in the day where the sun is starting to set. So there's a lot of rose gold, you know, brushing up against the house and brushing up against the tree. And night is coming. And I pictured that as the how the tree doing its job to protect the house and its inhabitants. Um, and you can see not finished at the bottom. I solved the problem I wanted to solve. I answered the, the question I wanted to answer and I just moved out. That's how I finished a painting. Um, sometimes we get all stuck as far as artists, but what's finished. Um, the real reason I go to the farm, the one I love to go to the farm is the animals. And that's the goat Nell on the right. And there was Nell standing in a beautiful field of, of yellow flowers, dancing around like little angels around this little, little fairy goat. Well, all of us that know Nell know that that's not the truth. So I had an opportunity to paint her looking at us, looking away, looking really cute. But I painted her with her head around. And what Nell's looking at is someone at the gate feeding her mother some sort of treat. And about two seconds after this painting was taken or the shot was taken, Nell marched her way up there and headbutted her mother out of the way so that she could get the treat. And, and that's Nell. So if you wonder what Nell's work looking at, that little angel knot, that's what Nell's looking at. Um, so next picture. So the real thing I love at the farm and, and my favorite thing at the farm, even though I tell Carl it's him, don't tell him it's really the cats. So this on the left is Linus and on the right is uh, Sophie. So I love these cats. Um, Linus on the left, she's with me all the time in this particular uh, painting. She is, and these are all the paintings by the way, she is um, sitting next to the hay bale. I was in there painting something else and then I took some pictures of her and I watched her, she sits there all the time. And Linus is the little sweetie. She has a surly little look to her face. Like she's always on the way going somewhere thinking about something like ticked off about something. And I painted her that day and she's looking at the sun like she's ticked off at the sun. And that's why I was kind of relaying that little surly little face, um, those little eyes and that little pinched nose. But uh, so that's Linus and on the right is Sophie. And I always see Sophie as a prize fighter. She's not as friendly as Linus. She comes barreling out of the woods all the time, walking with purpose. She's a little fat roly poly cat. And I always think to her, I always see her as a prize fighter. She's got this little kind of beat up looking little face. And I always see, think in my mind, I play all these games in my mind. And I think to myself saying to her, oh, Linus, or uh, Sophie, uh, how was the fight? You look kind of beat up. And I picture her saying back to me, you should see the other guy. Because she's that kind of, that kind of, um, that, that, little rough little cat. And they're barn cats, right? These girls are barn cats. They're not, they're tough girls. Um, but that's that's uh, the pictures that I have for today. And, and I like Bruce and everyone else really is appreciative of you, Bailey, for putting this together. And to be at the farm and painting, it's, it's cathartic. I go there and all my cares go away for those two hours that I'm there. Carl's phenomenal. He's funny and he's a great teacher. And I'm so appreciative of the fact that we can be there and um, appreciative of his family for donating the, the Kerner Farm. It's really pretty astounding. Thank you, Joanne. I love your your focus on the animals here. I love Linus's face in this <laughs> <laughs> this painting. Um, you can feel the the cat frustration at the world. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so next we are going to hear from Bill Sweeney. Hi, uh, my name is Bill Sweeney. Um, I really don't have much of a background in art. Um, I spent 40 years as a high school science teacher. I picked up a paintbrush for the first time when I was about in my late 20s, um, and it became a hobby, a favorite hobby. Uh, finally, when I turned 40, I decided it was time to be a little more serious about my hobby. And so I signed up for an art class at the old Darlington Art Center on uh, Baltimore Pike. And that's where I met Carl. Uh, at that point, I, in my mind, that's where I became an artist. Um, not a very good artist, at least initially, but that's when it went from being a hobbyist to being an artist. Um, it's hard to delineate what I've learned from Carl because most of what I know about art, I've learned either from him or while I was with him. Um, probably the simplest lesson was just to see a painting in what you're looking at. Um, if you're looking uh, in nature or just in your surroundings, you know, to see the, the colors in a landscape or the um, value changes or shadows in, um, in a still life or the lines in an interior or an exterior of a building, you know, how the lines come together or don't come together. Um, that's kind of step one. With that is then putting it on the paper or putting it on, uh, on a canvas and making sure that what you put on the canvas is <laughs> kind of resembles what you are looking at. Um, it's, it seems like a pretty obvious lesson, but it was a lesson that was hard learned by me. Um, see, after you put it on paper, then you, you, uh, you have to learn to let the paper talk, let the painting talk to you. Um, there are plenty of times when you have pretty good rendering of, of your, um, of your subject, but it doesn't hang well as a painting. This first painting, I think, I, is an example of that. This is called uh, Clearing the Pond. Um, this is a view of the pond in the farmhouse from like the ring road side of the, of the pond. And the sun is about nine o'clock in the morning. It's just coming over the top of the trees and streaming down the hill, illuminating the, um, the farmhouse. It comes around to the, far, the near side of the pond. And when I first did the painting, those grasses on the right-hand side weren't there simply because they weren't there when I painted it, uh, when, when I took the picture of it. Uh, but obviously, you know, something about it told me I, I needed to do something to take my eye from the foreground over the pond to the hills behind it. Um, and so I added a, 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 a line of grass or reed or two, and, and I said, that, that, that's going to do it. Of course, I then added 15 or 20, and I don't know how many are there right now. Um, it took me a couple, three years to get it the way I wanted to, but that's a good example of the painting talking to me and telling me what I had to do different. Uh, it's also called clearing the pond because those weeds are normally at this time of year, it looks like it's about October, are across the entire or surround the pond and you really can't see the farmhouse from this point of view. We go to the next painting. Uh, this I called clearing the pond again. Uh, the first one I did about uh, seven or eight years ago, this one I did, in fact, I just finished about three weeks ago. Um, it is from the farmhouse side of the pond. And um, I did very little to change this composition from what was actually there. Uh, what drew me to this was just the impossibly blue um, reflection of the sky in the pond. Um, and I, in fact, this, it, although this looks very rich to me, it doesn't begin to, to show just how deep the, um, the blue was uh, on the, in that pond. Of course, the reflection of the moon there in the foreground doesn't, doesn't hurt it either. Uh, if we go to the next slide, it, uh, the one on the left is called uh, High Mass. Uh, I, it's based on an image, a photograph that I took just about 20, 21 years ago. Carl invited myself and my wife and my five-year-old at the time out to the farm to, to work through, walk through the barn, walk through the, the farmhouse. And at that point, uh, the barn was a working barn and it was, it was piled high. I've never seen so many bales of hay in one spot in my life. I didn't grow up on a farm. Um, and uh, immediately I, I saw a, a painting in that. Um, actually, I did it in watercolor. 
uh, sold it out of an exhibition. And then about uh, six years ago, when I started with pastels, I realized I had to do it again. Uh, it's called high mass, high mass because of how dark, you know, the mass of darkness behind uh, in the painting, how, how the massive pile of hay. And also it, it kind of has a kind of a cathedral church-like sense to it. Um, the idea of viewing a barn as a cathedral didn't start. I didn't, I didn't, that was an original thought with me, but I wanted to make use of it in a painting. Now, if you're in the foreground of that painting and look straight up, or actually straight up and behind you a little bit, you'll see the loft of the barn. And that's what you see in the um, painting on the right, which I call Pop's Last Veil. Uh, this one I did uh, two summers ago. Um, and at that point, you know, the, the, the hay in the, in, the, in the barn was long gone. Um, there's a few bales hanging around, I think, for art, for art, for art students to move around and, and kind of uh, set up for, for their paintings. Um, and that's what this one is. Uh, well, I, I tried to capture in this how empty the barn is now. If you see the light strip, lights coming through the west side of the building through windows and a door. Um, and it's about five o'clock in the afternoon, so it's a late sun. Um, but it was making its way through the openings in the loft wall and shining on the far side of the barn underneath. And uh, I, I wanted to put that, thought it looked good, but also I think I was hoping it would capture a sense of just how empty the barn is now. Um, the light on the floor on the right of the painting, on the right of the bale of hay, wasn't there when I first completed it. In fact, I had a frame, I put it in a couple different, got juried into a couple different shows. Uh, finally, I took it out of when I got home last spring. I looked at it and I just didn't quite, I didn't think it met um, my expectations of it. So it's rare for me to actually take it out of the frame, um, take you know the paper off and everything else. And, and I added that light to the, to the right side of the bale of hay. Uh, again, here's another example of the painting telling me what it needed. And, and, um, and I listened to it. And now I'm quite happy with it. In fact, two weeks after I did this, after I put it all back together again, I had it in an exhibition and it was like the first painting sold. So I guess, um, I guess it was a good decision as far as that's concerned. But last comment I want to make about Carl, I taught for 40 years. I expected to learn a lot about art. I did, I have. Didn't expect to learn so much about teaching. Um, Carl is the great encourager and everyone, I'll just reinforce what everyone else has said. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Bill. I, I love the use of the the highlighting of light in your work is, is phenomenal. Thank you for sharing you. that with us. So next we're having Connie Wagner share. Hi, my name is Connie Wagner and I have been painting at the Kerner Farm since 2018. Um, this opportunity was presented to me um, at the Brain in My Museum of Art, where I am a tour guide. So I knew a little bit about the farm already, and I knew who Carl was, and I was really excited about this opportunity to work there. So I do have a background in painting. Um, I used to teach people with Alzheimer's how to paint, so I thought I was pretty good at painting overall, but boy... I've learned so much at the farm and I have improved so much over the last couple of years. It is absolutely insane. Um, Carl's an amazing teacher, as, as we all have said, but he teaches in a way, he doesn't actually flat out say, you know, this is what's wrong with your painting and this is how to fix it. He says it in like a backwards kind of way. And so you kind of figure out what's wrong with your painting and you figure out how to fix it. And I'm not sure how to explain it, but it kind of works. Um, but yeah, he, he, like everybody's been saying, he's an amazing, amazing teacher. Um, so what my plan is, is I'm going to show you five paintings I've done at the farm and tell you the lessons I've learned um, along the way. So this one here, this is a window on the outside of the barn. Now, Carl talks a lot about sharp and crisp edges. And honestly, I didn't quite understand why they were so important to a painting. I just didn't get it until this painting. Um, so the where the white stucco hits, like where the stone is at the bottom of the painting, that's a pretty crisp edge. And that shows depth. And it shows that the, the viewer can almost put their fingertips up underneath the stucco. So that's the lesson I learned at this painting about those crisp, sharp lines. Can I have the next slide, please? 
So the one on the left is a horseshoe on a white wall inside the barn. So uh, Carl was showing me when you have a subject that's one color, like a white wall, it's not a white wall. It has so many colors in it and I didn't quite understand it. And in this painting, I put browns and blues and pinks and reds and yellows and all these colors in it. But he showed me how to paint it in a way that it interprets as a white wall with a black horseshoe. And and it, the other colors really enhance it. So yeah, I, that that's a lesson I learned with that one and it really works. The one on the right, the waterfall, um, now, when we all paint at the farm, there's 30 acres and all of us spread out and find our own spot. So we're all kind of painting alone. And then Carl comes by every 15 minutes or so and checks in on us and talks to us and stuff. Um, so I was in the field painting the waterfall. And when you're alone with your subject matter for that many hours, you kind of disappear into your own little mental world, you know, kind of like a meditation. And I think that's what I was doing because I have no idea how I painted the trees in the background. Um, I, I learned something, but I don't know how I learned it. I don't know what I learned. Um, so maybe if I go in that mental space again, I'll learn it again. But anyway, I really love them. I think it enhances the painting a lot. Um, but so, yeah, I learned something. I don't know how. <laughs> anyway, um, next slide, please. The skulls on the left. Uh, Carl has some deer skulls inside the barn on the wall. And I think he has like five or six. And I think I've painted every one of them so far at least once. So when I personally do a painting, when I start a painting, I just throw paint all over the canvas and just kind of get the energy out and just kind of get the motivation going and, you know, kind of I'm ready. And um, then I clean up my mess and I tighten it up and I paint something. So that's kind of my process. So with this painting on the left, I wanted to show my process. So you see around the edges, the energy and the brush strokes and the dripping paint. But I also wanted to have the finished painting in the middle. So I learned you can have a unfinished canvas and a finished painting at the exact same time. The one on the right is an old radio in the farmhouse in a back bedroom. And um, if you haven't been in the farmhouse, it is a very old, loved, wonderful, full of character house. It has some really cool rooms. It has beautiful molding. It's just a great house. And so this subject has lots of lines, lots of straight lines. But if I made them too straight, like I did with the barn window, it would make the house look brand new. But I wanted to have the viewer feel like it's an old house. So I kept putting the lines in and taking the lines out. And they were too crisp and too new. And I was struggling with this idea with, with lines because it's all lines in this painting. And Carl came by and he noticed my struggle. And he suggested an idea. And honestly, at first, I thought he was joking because I, I thought it was the craziest idea. I had a little um, plastic ruler. And he said to paint the edge of the ruler and use like a stamp and stamp your painting with the edge of the ruler for all those straight lines. Now, what that did is it made it blobby and sometimes it disappeared and it was a little crooked, but it was straight at the same time. And it totally, that's exactly what this painting needed. And it, I was so excited. I was just painting the edge of the ruler and blobbing everywhere. It was, it was, I was so excited at that, that, that advice. And I've been using it since just something so simple about painting with a ruler. It's strange. Anyway, um, yeah, I absolutely love Carl. I love painting um, at the farm and any day painting at the farm is a good day. Thank you, Connie. And thank you for sharing those lessons that you've learned with us um, through your, your different paintings. So just to wrap up here before we go into some Q and A, Thank you so much to all of our artists who shared their lovely work and inspirations today. Before we go into some questions, I wanted to share that when the weather warms up, we have some great opportunities for people to paint at Kerner Farm. If you wanna join Carl's class with some of these presenters here, we still have Saturday openings for drawing and painting classes with Carl J. Kerner. Um, those are open on, we have a Saturday session open that starts in March and goes till May.
Um, we also frequently have plein air or outdoor painting opportunities at Kerner Farm. These programs are one day and they don't include any instruction, but are a great way to get out into this beautiful and inspiring space and to push yourself to create something in whatever medium you're comfortable in. So we have some dates coming up for that in April and May and then some evenings for that in the summer. All of these events are listed online at our website, brandywine.org, where you can register or reach out if you have any further questions. So with that, thank you so much for everyone joining us for this Kerner Farm Artist Spotlight. It was so great to see different perspectives of this lovely site. And feel free to add some questions in the chat if you have any. I see that we got one during the presentation. Um, this question is for Carol Cardin specifically, so I'll ask you to unmute here. Um, Carol, someone was wondering where you purchase the walnut ink that um, that you buy. And you're on mute right now. I just sent you a thing to... Okay, go ahead. Okay. So where do you uh, buy walnut ink? I, I think that you can get it at Daniel Smith, the catalog, and it's called uh, Norton's Walnut Ink, N-O-R-T-O-N, but you might be able to get it at Blick. I think Marion Art in Ardmore has it. I think there are a number of places now that have it. And it comes in um, a bottle walnut ink, and they also have walnut ink darkening medium. So there are two products that they have. Okay. And it's hard to find as far as the pens go. I use the wooden uh, Japanese pens, and they're harder to find these days. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Carol. Um, another question we have here, which might be best for um, Mary to answer, is um, asking if Kerner Farm is still a living farm, does Carl take care of the animals himself? So Carl does take care of the, of the animals, and they do sometimes have a haying operation there. So it's not, it's not a fully operational farm as it was in the days when Carl's grandfather and father farmed it. Um, but there are some some things going on there. And as, as people have pointed out, definitely the, the goats are there. Carl takes care of them as well as the barn cats. I also I also want to um, just drop in since, <laughs> since I'm unmuted for a second and uh, mention that on Wednesday, February 28th at the museum in person, we will have a conversation with Carl J. Kerner, the artist, uh, who you've heard so much about through this program. Carl will be speaking with our curator, Amanda Burden, about his current exhibition that's on view at Brandywine. So that you can register for that through the museum's website. <clears throat> it's February 28th at 6 p.m. in person. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, definitely. That'll be really cool. We've got a brand new um, water view room that we'll be doing that in. So that'll be lovely. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat right now. So um, thank you everyone so much for joining. And we will have this program um, available on YouTube in a couple weeks and we'll be sending out the link to everyone who registered.